Welcome back, and now I'm about to be reviewing WWE Monday Night Raw for April 17th, 2000, 2017. And this isn't going to be a weekly thing, I'm just reviewing this because I only review Love and Hip Hop Atlanta on Mondays, and then this Monday, yesterday, I just realized that I watched so many shows on Monday night that I should just review all of them and see, you know, which ones I should keep reviewing and which ones, you know, I shouldn't because, it's like I said, there's just so many shows that I watch on Monday. So I'm about to try to review this wrestling show, Raw, for the 17th of April. So this episode starts off with the video package basically showing what happened last week with the whole um, attack, Braun Strowman on Roman Reigns, which a lot of people was high on. Personally, I didn't really like that. I mean, I did. I, it was all right, but like it was. I'm not as high on high on it as everybody else saying that was the best backstage attack and all that. I thought it was actually kind of comedic how Braun Strowman kept. I'm not done with you. I thought that was comedic. I didn't really think it was all that great. But basically, Braun Strowman kicks off the Monday Night Raw. He comes out. He says Roman Reigns not there tonight. He talks about how he's a monster. This and the other. He's in the rain, by the way. Then we hear Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle's music. Kurt Angle comes out. He talks about how Strowman should be in trouble for what he did. But he's going to give Roman Reigns exactly what he wants, which is a match with Braun Strowman at Payback. So that he can get exactly what the name of the pay-per-view is. Payback. That was lame, but I love Kurt Angle. But um, basically, Braun Strowman's happy about that. But he says, I want competition tonight. Kurt Angle's like, no. Braun Strowman's like, oh, well, you must not have heard what happened about to the last GM. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But he basically says, um, I had the same incident with Mick Foley. So I really, I want some competition. Now, um, Kurt Angle tells him to leave. And he says, all right, or something like that. I don't really remember. Um, throughout the night, I'm just going to say it right here. Throughout the night, Braun Strowman attacked um, Kalisto. He, we just saw him dragging Kalisto, and he picked him up and just threw him in a trash can. Um, I shouldn't have said that one first. First, Gold and Truth were supposed to have a match with in with the Carl, the club, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, and Strowman attacked both of them, like beat the mess out of them, and we saw Finley and some other trainers try to check on the Golden Truth. Strowman was in the locker room. Referee told him to leave. Strowman's like, I'll leave when I want to. Then we see him do the thing with Kalisto. And Big Show went after Strowman, knocked him down off his feet, said, pick on somebody on size, and we get our main event for tonight. So it's going to be Big Show versus Braun Strowman, the main event of Raw again. Um, first match is Chris Jericho versus Samoa Joe. Seth Rollins on commentary. They keep calling him the King Slayer. So they really trying to get that nickname over. They want us to start referring to Rollins, Seth Rollins as the King Slayer. No longer the architect. And no longer that other nickname that he had that I forgot. I can't think of right now. Um, he's on commentary and we see Joe defeat Chris Jericho with the rear naked choke. Jericho taps or goes to sleep. I don't remember. Excuse me. After the match, Joe cuts a promo on Rollins. Rollins stood on the announce table, I think. And he cuts the promo back. Um, Seth Rollins says, you know what they say about payback, Joe. Payback's a bitch. And I thought that was so lame. But I love Rollins. Just like Kurt Angle. Too lame. I know they not coming up with this themselves. Mm -hmm. Kurt Angle and Seth Rollins said corny jokes to, you know, put over the payback name. So, whatever. Um... Then we see the next match, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows come out. They're, they're saying, oh, we don't have opponents now. And Enzo and Cass come out. They have a great match. Um, I thought it was better than the first match, Chris Jericho versus Samoa Joe. It was a really good match. And it ended with um, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows getting a win after... By the way, Booker T is on commentary because David Otunga is doing a movie, so he's going to be on commentary for the next couple weeks. Everyone loves Booker T on commentary, but in this match in particular, I think he might have been getting on Michael Cole's nerves a little bit because Michael Cole would try to throw something to Booker, and Booker would always... He likes Gallows and Anderson a lot, so he was putting them over a lot. But Cole would like try to say something like... The way Anderson won was... 
Basically, Enzo tried to go for a, t a middle rope DDT. He jumped off the middle rope and tried to do a DDT. Anderson caught him and threw him back on the turnbuckle. So his knees and like his legs hit the turnbuckle. And all Anderson did was pin him. And Cole's like, oh, Booker, we've never seen nothing like that before. What are you taking that move? And Booker's like, do what you got to do to win. Like, he didn't really care. Like about the move. He's just glad that his guys won. But I mean, you know, we all love Booker T on commentary. And so, But the way Anderson won was very weird. It was very, very weird. So, I don't know what that was about. Maybe it was a messed up spot. Maybe something else was supposed to happen. It looked like he grabbed the tights. I don't know. Um, Then we see the Miz TV segment. I love this. Um, Miz is on Basically, Ambrose is his guest, but Andrew, Ambrose jumped the gun and came out before Miz introduced him. Ambrose, well, Miz starts going off on Ambrose saying, yeah, you're the number one draft pick. And I completely forgot that, to be honest. And that just makes me think, why would SmackDown trade the number one draft pick? And you didn't even get Raw's number one draft pick. You did get Raw's number two draft pick, I think, though. Because wasn't Raw's number two draft pick Charlotte? I think I think it was Charlotte. But, um, because Rollins was number one for Raw, and I think Charlotte was number two. Charlotte was either number one. You know, Ballard was number three. So, yep, Charlotte was number two. So, okay. But anyway, um, yeah, Miz cut a great promo on Ambrose, but then Ambrose came back from it. But I think we all forget that Ambrose is such a good promo guy because he he took Miz to school just like Cena does, in my opinion. And then Miz gets the mic again and starts talking. I think Maurice might have said something. But then um, it's so weird that they feud him, by the way, because they're not on SmackDown no more. The Superstar Shake-Up was supposed to shake it up so that we get new feuds. But they feuding on Raw when they just were feuding on SmackDown. So, I don't know. This must be Miz is about to get the Intercontinental Championship. I think Ambrose is weird. Um, Basically, Miz starts talking again. Ambrose takes everything off all slowly. Takes his jacket off. Takes stuff out of his pocket. And then goes after Miz. So, um... Then we see Cruiserweight action, TJ Perkins versus Jack Gallagher. Um, it's a special appearance by Neville. Neville comes out and sits um, ringside. Not at the commentary booth, but ringside because, you know, Raw doesn't have the tables out there. Then Aries comes out. And Aries is like, oh, uh, yeah, I didn't know we were making special appearances. I'm making a special appearance. And he sits right next to Neville. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, the match match was a good match, and TJ Perkins gets the win because he throws Gallagher into Aries. By the way, Neville got up. He didn't sit next to Aries the whole match. Um, he throw, but TJ Perkins throws Gallagher into Aries, goes back in the ring. Aries about to get in the ring and attack him. Neville sweeps um, Aries' legs, so Aries is taken out. Uh, Perkins get a quick win, and then they walk away laughing. Um, then we get what I thought was the main event until they announced the main event. It's for the number one contenders match. And for the number one contender to Bailey's Women's Championship, it's Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks versus Mickey James. I find this funny that Alexa Bliss and Mickey James are automatically inside the number one contender match when Dana Brooke, poor Dana Brooke, hasn't got anything. And she's been she was featured on a lot of Raw since the super since the draft, original draft. Poor Dana Brooke, when is she gonna get her? And Emma, I mean, when is Emma just got back? She not she wasn't at WrestleMania, she's not like Alicia Fox. Raw actually got a lot of women when you think about it. Cause they still got Summer Ray too. And they also got Paige. So Raw People talk about how SmackDown has a better women's roster. I think Raw does because Raw has more than what we think. We think it's just Sasha Bailey. It was just Sasha Bailey and Charlotte. That's just what they were giving us. They still got Nia, all the girls that are in this match now. And they have like, so there's four girls, there's a champion, so that's five. And they also got like four other girls, Summer Rae, Dana Brooke, Emma, Paige. It's a lot. This was a great match, fantastic match. I thought 
each one of the girls were going to win at different points. Actually, at no point in the match did I think Nia was going to win. I was hoping for her to win, but I didn't really think she was going to win. She never really had that moment where it was like, bam, she did a big move and now she can get the win. It was never that moment with Nia Jax. We had it with Alexa Bliss. We had it plenty of times with Sasha Banks. And we had it once with Mickey James. But great match. Um, I hated seeing Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss go at it because Alexa Bliss is just so little compared to Nia Jax. Well, she's little, period. Five foot of fury. I like that. Alexa Bliss is my favorite inside this match. And she got the win. Like, simple as that. She comes to Raw and she gets the win. And I'm looking forward to Bailey versus Alexa Bliss. And I'm hoping Alexa Bliss doesn't get the title from Bailey. I'm tired of short reigns on Raw. I hope that Bailey retains. And this is building up to a Bailey versus Sasha match at SummerSlam. I want Bailey to win at SummerSlam, and I want her to lose the title eventually to Nia Jax. That's what I want to happen. Kurt Hawkins comes out, talks about how he fought Big Show last week, and now Big Show's in the main event, so who am I fighting this week? Balor comes out. I thought Balor was out of action, but apparently he's fighting. But then again, he didn't really take any bumps in this match. He just basically beat the mess out of Kurt Hawkins and got the win with the coup de grace. Um, we see a Bray Wyatt promo. Um, he talks about the House of Horrors match, I think this was called. I didn't care about that at all. Jeff Hardy versus Cesaro in a dream match. Great match. Really good match. Um, Jeff Hardy ended up winning with a Swanton Bond. I think it um, went to two commercial breaks, so it was a really good match. It could have very well been the main event. Um, but... The main event was Big Show versus Strowman. And Strowman and Big Show, they had a good match like they did before. And they teased the ring breaking like three times. Or twice, I think it was. And then the third time was a charm when they did the suplex. <laughs> this was the best one because of the referee. I replayed this so many times on Snapchat on my story because the referee fell off the <laughs> The referee fell on his head. It was so funny. Just re-watch it and just keep looking at the referee. It was hilarious. But the ring broke. Strowman still got up. Really, I thought Big Show was going to win this match a couple of times. When he did the choke slam, I was like, oh. Strowman kicked out. When he did, Strowman jumped off the, I think it was middle rope on Big Show. And Big Show caught him with a knockout punch. I really thought that was it. Because he, he couldn't get the rope. Because usually with a knockout punch, that's it. Unless they can get the rope. The only person I recall kicking out of the knockout punch, like really kicking out, was Sheamus. Um, but Strowman kicked out, and they really are just building him up as being this unstoppable monster. But I wish Reigns didn't beat him when he beat him. They're building up to this match between Strowman and Reigns, and I just feel like Reigns is about to win again. But this, like, the rain breaks and Strowman still gets up and gets his music play like he's just a complete unstoppable monster. And that was it for Raw. This episode was, it was all right. When it comes to match, matches, the matches were great. We had some good matches. We had Strowman and Big Show, Jeff Hardy and Cesaro, and the women's tag team match. Look. The TJ per the cruiserweight match was TJ Perkins versus Jack Gallagher. That was a good match too, but it was kind of distracting because we were more. It was more about Neville and um, Aries when I don't understand why Neville even came out. Like it was, he, he had nothing to do with them. Scouting. I mean, you're the champion, so we can watch that on TV. Um, Miss TV was a great, great segment. Um, the tag team match with the club and end zone cast was a really good match. Um, Joe and Jericho was a good match. The only match that was really throwaway, no one really cared about, was the Finn Balor and Kurt Hawkins match. And it was all right. I mean, it wasn't the boring. So this was a really good episode of Raw. Just let me know if y'all want me to keep reviewing Raw every single week. And I will actually take notes on it because... I didn't really take notes. I just went through the matches and a little bit of the stuff that I remember. Um, but I will, you know, keep doing raw reviews if the reviews on this review are really good. So just let me know in the comments.